With companies like Verichip, we have been hearing about implantable computer chips for over a decade. This innovation is a microchip implanted in the skin. This is the first American company to ever try this. So what are they tracking? And would you say yes if your boss asked you to do the same? And while we have been conditioned over the years to accept the idea of an implantable chip, Elon Musk has been warning us of the dangers of artificial intelligence, or AI. I'm really quite close to, or I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. The, the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. Like for if, us? Yes. Like if you, if you can't beat it, join it. That's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. One thing is for sure we will not control it. Watch an implant that merges the brain with artificial intelligence that's aimed at helping patients who have brain disorders. Here, Wisconsin-based company Three Square Market announced its plans to install rice-sized microchips in its employees. The implants can be used to scan into the office building, to purchase food at work, and to log into the computers this, there. This, um, I think, has a very good purpose, uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanities. Uh, future as a civilization relative to AI. This, I think, has tremendous potential, um, and we, we hope to uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a human patient um, before the end of next year. So this is not, not far. Uh, future. The implant is giving hope to people like Terry Little, whose mom had a stroke. And if that technology worked and it was something that gave me hope, I wish she would have had it 20 years ago. Terry owns a Tesla and says her car is an example of how Musk is already changing the world. Now she hopes his brain implant will soon be able to help her mom. And we can question, you know, the way he gets there, but he's always thinking of ways to improve lives and including electric cars. Russ Hancock, who funds these kinds of projects, believes Musk is the right person to merge human beings with artificial intelligence. This is a guy that has changed the world as we know it with an electric car that actually works. Now he's trying to get inside your brain. When Elias Brotberger goes to work, he doesn't need ID. And he doesn't need money. In fact, much of what he needs to get through the day is hidden right there, just below the surface in his hand. You like to touch it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, it's yeah. like a grain of rice. Yeah, a grain of rice. Embedded in his hand is a microchip that serves as his keys, his ID, and his wallet. Yeah, it's all in chips. So I use it like to get around the building. Buy snacks. Yeah, exactly. Let's buy some snacks. Exactly. So I can't open it. No. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to first blip my chip and it will log me in. Mm -hmm. And from there, I get access to the fridge. Popular TV shows like Black Mirror have imagined chips as part of a dystopian future. Install ingrained procedure with local anesthetic and you're good to go. In Sweden, the microchips are already here. The microchip implants use the same technology that's in contactless credit cards. Which have made cash pretty much obsolete in Sweden. No cash. At this tech fair, a chipping event for those on the cutting edge, merging their hands with this new technology. I thought it would be fun, right? The process is simple and swift. A pinch of the skin, and in a matter of seconds, the chip is inserted. The transformation is complete. As for the pain... I barely felt it. But even in this nation of early adopters, not everyone is racing to get chipped. Feel less human. I will feel like a robot. I think, I mean, it's so much more data can go into this, you know, when it's in your body. Uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> and the Neuralink team is clear that the device is designed to put information into the brain. Um, the system, even in version one, that we're uh, going to unveil today, is capable of, of a thousand times more 
uh, electrodes than the, uh, the, the best system out there. And they're all read and write. My team focuses on building chips and systems to get neural signals recorded from our electrodes out of the brain and also to put information into the brain. Remember, we want bi-directional information. We don't only want to read information out of the brain. We want to be able to put it back into the brain. Now, to some of you, that may seem a little bit fantastical that you could write information into the brain. But actually, the, the basic building blocks of that technology are already there. Including having control over the body and our speech. According to Elon, Neuralink is a way for mankind to merge with artificial intelligence. It, it, it. Uh, ultimately, yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So, uh, but this is, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, this is a thing that you can choose to have if you want. But I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. How many of your employees many at this point have chosen to have the chip implanted and how many do you have to go? Yes, to date uh, we have uh, 196 employees and 92 of them are chipped to this day. Uh, and what's the risk, what's it, been like in terms of their experience? Has anybody said, I want this thing out of me? Or uh, when they leave, do they have to get it out? We've had one employee that's left that had it removed. However, the vast majority of our employees absolutely love the conveniences that having this chip in their hand really brings to them. Bodies could transform the way we tackle many everyday tasks. Some workers in Sweden are already developing and volunteering, volunteering rather, to have chips injected into their hands. The technology can make some tasks easier and reduce the amount of personal items employees need to carry. Plants, microchips. Right yes. into them. We've seen something like this here. There was um, there was a company that in they're Wisconsin, right, yeah. so they can get stuff out of the vending machine yeah. with these microchips. So what's happening in Sweden? So basically, in Sweden, over the past couple of years, several thousand people have had these little rice grain-sized microchips put into their hands, which contain information that they can use to say check into the gym or get into the office or huh. pay for train tickets. Right. So on the one hand, everyone can appreciate that that's convenient, right? How many times have you been looking for your key fob at the gym or can't remember? Yeah your password for something. Um, but I think the bigger question here is, look, as, as the human body itself becomes a technological platform, right, there are big questions we need to consider about what kind of information is put out about us, uh, from us, quite literally, and right. also <laughs> further down the line, what kind of access do other people or platforms have to that information that is inside us, right? This yeah. is a biotech question, this kind of blurring. Track me on my phone to see if they can get me to buy some socks or underwear. It's a different thing if my employer can see where I am, see what I'm doing when I'm off the job. This is serious stuff. We're talking about a nonstop potential connection to my body. I can't turn it off. I can't put it away. It's in me. That's a, that's a big problem. Even a dedicated biohacker has concerns. It's very easy to hack a chip implant. So my advice is don't put your life secrets on a Many chip implant. Many Christians are concerned about this. Revelations 13 of the Bible warns of the mark of the beast, a mark placed into the foreheads so that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark. Whether you believe this or not, it is fast becoming reality. While we act as if we have no choice but to create artificial intelligence and submit to its fate, we collectively sacrifice our own free will. And if we are unwilling to claim dominion over our own bodies, then we will most certainly get what we deserve. Um, and this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. But I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important.
composed of nearly 100 billion cells called neurons. Neurons come in many complex shapes, but generally they have a dendritic arbor, a cell body called a soma, and an axon. The neurons of your brain connect to form a large network through axon dendrite junctions called synapses. At these connection points, neurons communicate with each other using chemical signals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are released from the end of an axon in response to an electrical spike called an action potential. When a cell receives enough of the right kind of neurotransmitter input, a chain reaction is triggered that causes an action potential to fire and the neuron to in turn relay messages to its own downstream synapses. Action potentials produce an electric field that spreads from the neuron and can be detected by placing electrodes nearby, allowing recording of the information represented by a neuron. Our, our goal is to record from and stimulate um, spikes in neurons and, and do so in a way that is uh, orders of magnitude um, more than anything that's been done to date and uh, safe and um, good enough that you can, it's, it's not like a major operation, it's, it's sort of equivalent to, to sort of a LASIK type of thing. So this is in contrast to um, the, the best FDA approved system which is like a, a Parkinson's deep brain simulation a thing which would have on the order of, of 10 electrodes. So um, the system, even in version one that we're uh, going to unveil today, is capable of, of a thousand times more uh, electrodes than the, uh, the, the best system out there. And they're all read and write. In terms of data protection, there is always risk involved in the handling of personal data. It depends on what safety measures are taken to protect the data. And to determine that, a risk analysis should be conducted before using these chips. Do you arise from humans microchipping themselves? This is the mark of the beast. <laughs> This is, listen, no, no, let me, let me tell you something. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no biblical scholar here, but it's amazing the parallels made. Now listen, let's get down to brass tacks. Would you, st not you, I wish they'd stop with this. They go, we're going cashless. We've been cashless. Where's this cash? You ever buy a house with cash or a car? We've got this. I, I don't even have, I got a couple of bucks. We've been cashless, but that's not the issue. One of these days, these kids, these, I think you call them millennials or something, they're gonna take these little tiny RFID, radio frequency identification chips, about the size of a grain of rice. And they're gonna be cool, Scotty. Oh, they're gonna be waiting in line overnight to get implanted. And they're gonna say, look at this. I can go to the drugstore. I can go to a cab. Isn't this great? How cool am I? Look, I've got this little embedded chip. And they'll say, they have medical records. And you're going to do that to grandma and grandpa in case, God forbid, they have some kind of dementia they're walking off. I mean, after all, we have it in our dogs, right? It's like on star for human beings. But here's the catch. One of these days, God forbid, Scotty, you defy, they, they, they find you guilty of something. And you go before a court and they say, we're going to sentence you to prison. No, we're going to turn your chip off and you don't exist. Poof. Everything. In fact, people are going to notice that when you walk up, they're going to say, who is this? You're not registered. You say, it's me. What do you mean? Who is this? No, you're not showing up on this. You don't exist. If you think I'm kidding, this is Elba, this is, this is like some type of a prison. And people are going to be, one of these days, enslaved by this chip that will not, will, it will replace okay. you. No way.